Hey everybody, it's Valen from Mischief of Mice here with a getting started on Botania. First things first, I highly recommend you make yourself a Lexica Botania. And this is made with just a simple sapling of uh, just about any kind and a book in a crafting grid will get you a Lexica Botania. And this is kind of like its own in-game wiki. So it there is a lot of reading that you can do in here. Um, I mean, you're just scrolling through it, it's pretty easy to work with. I mean, it's also kind of pretty with some of the uh, new animations on here. Uh, there's also some uh, achievements listings um, that you can go to. There's uh, challenges you can check out uh, for uh, like challenging yourself. This uh, mod is designed to um, run on its own with vanilla. It can work quite well with other mods that will usually end up uh, speeding up your um, uh, progress in it. And uh, it's actually a tech mod disguised as a magic mod. So to start off, once you get your uh, Batania, uh, Lexica Batania, I do recommend you can easily go through the basics and me mechanics section there, which actually there's a little back button down here. Uh, once you click on something, let's say uh, Welcome to Batania, there's uh, usually a next page uh, buttons down at the bottom, right, bottom there. But I do recommend you go through the tutorial. It will not go through the entire book. It may seem like it at first, but it will definitely give you a good getting started. So if you want to read through instead of watching a video, that's a really good alternative. But I do recommend you just watch my video instead. So <laughs> what do you need to get started? I recommend you make yourself a petal apothecary uh, to get going straight away. Um, also, uh, I it's optional but you can get yourself a flower pouch as well, which is just made with some uh, wool of any color and a uh, petal of any color. And you get petals from mystical flowers that you'll find out in the world. You just break one, put it in your inventory, and it turns into a couple petals of the same color. So, uh, and but with this in your inventory, it will end up uh, keeping your inventory fairly empty as all the flowers will go into the uh, pouch. And seeing as how there's 16 different flowers and you need a whole lot of them, it's very recommended. So, moving on, uh, the Petal Apothecary. You get yourself any color flower, uh, any color flower, turn it into some petals, which, like I said, you just put a flower in a crafting grid, it will turn into two petals. And then uh, you can have a couple slabs, some stone, and you get yourself a Petal Apothecary, which will look like one of these here when placed. Now, it's not going to have the fancy uh, animations I have going on right now, but uh, you can actually do many things with it. You can put uh, lava in it, and it will turn into kind of a garbage can of sorts. You can, um, and it will uh, generate light. You can put vines in it, and it will turn into something like this without the uh, fancy particle effects, of course. Um, uh, but it's essentially used with water. Now, I have some water here, and... You can actually get more here. Hello, how you doing? Uh, we can fill this in here, and then you can actually make recipes in this. Essentially, this is one of many ways of uh, crafting. It's the uh, Batania's early on crafting table. Uh, so, in order to use that, you'll end up needing to advance a little further. So, the next thing to do is to make a living wood twig for a wand. But, in order to make that, you need living wood. In order to make living wood, you've got to make a flower. First flower you're going to be making is the pure daisy. For those interested in knowing where to find it, under basics and mechanics, pure daisy, and you can find the recipe just by scrolling to the end here. And it takes four white petals in a petal apothecary. Now, petal apothecary, uh, when you put one down, I'm going to use this one here, you can do one of two things. You can uh, fill it with a bucket by right-clicking, or you can actually throw a bucket of water at it, and it will fill it as well, using up the bucket's contents. So there are uh, automation methods that you can use for this. Now I am going to just continue with getting some of these. Now these white mystical flowers, if you put them into your inventory, will turn into petals. Now I'm going to take four of those and some seeds. Now this is the thing. With Batania in the Petal Apothecary, when you put the required items in there, one, two, three, 
four. I'm just hitting Q and dropping them in. You can actually go into your inventory and drag them out as well if you like. Uh, but you see here, it actually recognizes that there's a recipe in there. And if I put seeds in, then it's going to process that as a flower. This is so that if you end up accidentally putting the wrong combination in and that's not the flower you want, that you can actually pull these back out. To do that, you just right click with an empty hand uh, sh shift right click with an empty hand, excuse me, and you'll get the last item pulled out of the uh, apothecary. And you can continue doing that until you get all the ingredients back out. But we want to actually make one. So you toss in the seeds, it uses up the water, and you get yourself a pure daisy in your inventory. Now, what does a pure daisy do? You put it down, and the items around it, you'll notice here, I actually have. Um, multiple different items, it will turn smooth stone into living rock. It will turn regular wood logs into living wood. It will also turn multiple other things like ice, nether rack, soul sand into alternate items as well, which you can find all this in your uh, Lexica Batania here. If you're not sure where to look to find some of these things, I recommend just clicking on the uh, this book one here, the index, and you just start typing what you're looking for. And it should help you find what it is. So, uh, for instance, while we're waiting for that, I click on here and we'll type uh, the uh, pure daisy. See, I just type in the word pure, and there it is there. Simple enough. All right, over time, you'll see that there are these little particle effects. There we go. It will actually turn these items into their alternates. Uh, it does take about, you know, 10 to 30 seconds there. I, I can't remember. I never bothered to time it. But over time, you'll end up seeing them turn into these alternate things. Then you can harvest them with, because this is wood, you can harvest it with an axe. You can harvest the rock with the pick and so on. Now, as I'm in creative, there we go. You can see that the uh, items turned into packed ice and uh, sand and cobblestone, etc. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to grab these, since I'm in creative, and use them that way. Now, two living wood in a crafting grid will give you a living wood twig. By itself, it's fairly useless. When you combine three living wood twigs, therefore you need six living wood log or living wood logs will make you uh, plus two petals of any color you like, which it will end up uh, and, uh, putting them on your wand. So you can stylize this to yourself as you like. It will end up making you a wand of the forest. As there's one here, I'm just going to grab that. Now, this wand is essentially a wrench uh, tool, uh, the go-to item for modifying just about any of the machines, magics, functions in the entire mod. So I recommend having this with you, near you, in an easily accessible area at all times if you're going to be messing around with Batania, because you will need it very frequently. So the first thing you're going to need to do is a mana pool after that. Now why would you need a mana pool? This essentially is a container for the fuel that is used in this mod. Fuel being, oops, let me uh, change the time back, the fuel being mana, and this is how you store it to make a mana pool, it's just a U-shape here of the living rock in a crafting grid. And I'm actually going to grab one of those. Next, you're going to want to make yourself a mana spreader, which is six living wood with any color uh, petal here and one bar of gold. That will get you one mana spreader. What's the mana spreader do? This is similar to a pipe system but it's more a direct route. Uh, essentially, it will allow you to transfer any uh, fuel that you generate from your flowers. And in most cases, the flowers are what generates your fuel or mana in this mod. So you're gonna wanna make sure that that is how it goes. So first thing you do, place down your mana pool. Your mana spreader will take the uh, mana from the generating flowers and direct it into a pool. Or you can use it to direct it from a pool to uh, another source. In this case, I'm going to place it, let's see if I can actually uh, line it up here, right there. So you can see it's actually facing there. Now I have my Wand of the Forest. By holding my Wand of the Forest, it tells me 
that it's actually shooting at that mana pool. By hovering over the mana pool, it tells me that currently mana tablets can will deposit their mana into the mana pool. By shift right clicking, it will reverse that. So therefore, it will end up doing the opposite. A mana tablet or other items that accept mana will go will uh, get mana from this pool if there is any in it. Right now, I'm going to leave it on its default. You can see that there's a little meter below the mana pool words. That actually tells you on a very large scale how much mana there is in there. Obviously there is none at the moment. This here, mana spreader, has its own little uh, bar as well right through the word unknown status there. And that is empty as well. When I right click it updates. It's not going to update regularly. You always have to right click on these to see the current status, which I will show you as we start generating mana, which we have not done yet. So it's currently saying it's directed at the mana pool. And you can actually see it's highlighted the mana pool that it's aiming at as well. So it tells me that that's where it's going. Now if I have multiple mana pools and I don't want it to actually go to the one that it's aiming at, I could break it and replace it again so that it's exactly aiming at the uh, other mana pool. But that's a bit impractical. To do so, I recommend you just shift right click and it should highlight the uh, mana spreader, and then shift right click where you want it to aim at. And you'll notice it turned by itself. Now I am currently in bind mode. By holding shift and right click, you will switch to the other mode, which is function mode. This is completely different, and if I right click on here, it will update, but if I shift right click, you'll notice it is like aiming way down. It's like aiming into the ground, what the heck? Well, the reason for that is if you hold shift and right click, you can continuously change where it's aiming at. You can see here, it's best if, hold on a second here, it's best if you are standing behind where you want it to aim. So you can actually manually have this thing aiming at something, just like that. Or you can just use the uh, bind mode. Now sometimes it's best to, uh, whoops, there we go, bind mode. As sometimes it's uh, easier to just have it aim with the bind mode. Shift right click, shift right click. Other times if there are objects that are in the way, like another mana spreader is here and you're trying to just hit this mana pool and not that other mana spreader, then you'll want to uh, switch to the opposite mode and then you'll have a little uh, uh, messing around to do. See if I can actually get this. There we go. So you can see it's highlighted the um, the mana, uh, mana pool and it is now doing that. Otherwise where it was aiming before this mana spreader was in the way. So those are the basic mechanics of mana spreaders, mana pools, but let's get into what we need to do whoops, to get some mana. First thing is making a flower. Under generating flora, we're going to make day blooms. And with this, it's simple enough. Couple yellow, one orange, one blue for each day bloom. I recommend that you end up making yourself 12 to start with, which means you're gonna have to do a bit of exploring. And with the current uh, setup that is of the most recent version that I have now, uh, the flowers are a bit more sparse than they used to be so that uh, people don't get overloaded with nonstop flowers everywhere. Uh, which I do appreciate, and it will encourage you to pick these up as you go, provided you have yourself your flower pouch. Now, I already have a whole bunch in here. A couple of yellow, one orange, um, and I believe it was, or is it light blue? Light blue? Let's double check here. Yep, light blue. And, of course, I will need some seeds. Go up to a uh, petal apothecary. Let's change the time back to day again. And you're going to want to toss these in. And there you go. Got myself a day bloom. I'm going to clear these out of my inventory for the moment. Now I'm in creative, so therefore I can actually uh, spawn a whole bunch of these in just by doing this. But you'll do that several times. Uh, to give you an example of how to uh, actually make, uh, take advantage of this, by putting water in there, and having uh, the ingredients in your inventory again. 
let's grab these. Within a certain time limit, you should be able to, with an empty hand, shift right click. Oh, I don't have the seeds either. You know, let me take double sets here because I think it's been too long. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is, just so you guys can all see what's going on. All right, toss in one of these, two of these, one of those, and you can see it says day bloom is ready, just add a seed. Toss that in. I add another bucket of water. And it now says right click with an empty hand to add back the last recipe. This is so that you can expedite. There you go, everything goes in there except for the seeds. Pretty darn cool, which I would need to get some more seeds for, but I don't have those, so let's just pull these items out. There we go, just like that. And I'm gonna throw those back in there for now. So, anyway, moving on, day blooms. You cannot, you, well, you can put them next to each other, but it's not very useful. So I recommend that you end up putting them diagonal to each other. Now, the uh, mana spreaders will shoot through regular vegetation like grass or flowers. So there's no problem with that, with them destroying them or being blocked. And therefore, let's see, how many do I have here so far? That's three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and uh, let's put one here, twelve. All right, so you can see I don't have my Wand of the Forest activated, but you just saw a green pulse coming out. That's because it's generating mana. These flowers will automatically, let me put my uh, Wand of the Forest back here. When I highlight them, it says this day bloom, when I right click it constantly, is currently getting mana from the sun. That's how day blooms work. Now, if I were to put one over here, it's a bit too far for that mana spreader to pick up and I right click on it, you can see it's actually generating mana. And it also shows a mana spreader picture with a red X next to it. That's because it is not connected to any mana spreader and therefore it's just generating mana and there. Its internal buffer is full and it's going nowhere. So that's absolutely useless. You're gonna to wanna to have it within a certain range of this mana spreader so that it can actually fill up. And you can see it's filling up a bit slowly but its buffer is much larger. So all these flowers, you can see they're all hooked up to the uh, mana spreader because they're all highlighting, are uh, generating into this mana spreader, which it, once it gets to a certain point, will generate a pulse and start filling the mana pool. Now you notice here that the meter for the mana pool is empty. When I right click to update, it shows that there is a small amount there. Now this, of course, doesn't really have a buffer. It's just a giant storage tank. So over time, this will generate mana into the mana pool. And this is a good starting point. This is just so that you can get yourself a little bit of mana to get yourself something more advanced and a little bit more uh, usable. Because you could make entire fields of day blooms, but that's not really practical because it's just this massive amount of space. Instead, this mod is all designed uh, for creativity and how you can make yourself more uh, inventions, I guess you could say. There are ways of generating mana much more advanced than this. But these are also passive flowers. Now, after three days, these will turn into dead bushes and disappear. So you're going to have to do something a little bit more permanent. There are other flowers that you can choose as well, but for the purposes of this getting started, this is what I went with. For the next step, I'm going to recommend that we go with generating flora and we start with endoflames. Now these should live much longer and uh, actually in a permanent way because you're going to have to constantly feed them yourself or create an automated system. Now these here, they will accept fuel like uh, more standard fuel that uh, usually would go in a furnace like um, you've got coal, you've got uh, wood, um, lava, things of that nature. Now you can uh, do lava generators, um, but there have been several issues with that over time. But the more entry level stuff is going to be coal or charcoal. Charcoal, of course, being generated from wood. Uh, now, or if you've been doing a bunch of mining, which I hope you should have by this point, because it's not just a jump right into it straight away without any materials mod. Um, but you're going to want to create end of flames. I recommend making about eight of these. Uh, now, mana powder is uh, actually rotating here around these uh, petals as well. Now, 
how do you make mana powder? Now, if you notice here, when I hover over, it says shift click to see the recipe. If I hold shift, everything stops moving, thankfully, so I don't have to try and uh, hit a moving target. Then you just click and it tells you exactly what you can use. Different floral powders can be used to make a mana powder by dropping it into a mana pool. Simple enough. And it uses a bit of uh, mana. Not very much though. When you hover over this, let's see this is 10 times zoom. This is the normal usage. Uh, so it doesn't use very much at all. So this is entry level stuff. Right now, we still don't have very much in the mana pool, but I'm sure we'll have enough to make a little floral powder. Now to make floral powder, you're going to need petals of just about any, any color really. Uh, and you will end up needing to make yourself a pestle and mortar. To make one of those, you need a stick, a piece of wood, and a bowl in a crafting grid. Very simple stuff. Then you take these items in another crafting grid, you could even use your own personal one, and make yourself floral powder of whatever color it is petal that you chose to make. Now with that, you can then toss that in with the petals and make yourself the, uh, whoops, let's go back here, endo flame, which is what? Light gray, red, brown, brown, and the floral powder, which actually I realize we need to turn this into the magic powder. To do that, you just drop it in. You see here it says it will turn into that without a problem. If it doesn't have enough mana in there, it's going to have a little X and you're going to have to wait a little longer. There we go. Oh, funny enough, it actually turned the uh, <laughs> that purple, which I'm sure you could change it back to another color if you desire. For now, I'm just going to end up doing this. Stand up here. One, one, two, two, and one of these. And you can see here, I just need to add seeds and I get myself an endo flame. And there we go. All right, endo flames. How do these work? You just place one down. Let's see, it's already activated to this uh, mana spreader. Sometimes the mana spreader may get overloaded with the uh, number of flowers you have to it. And you may need to shift right click and assign it to a different mana spreader. In this case, I'm just gonna reassign it back to that mana spreader, another shift right click. and. How's it work? Well, you toss a fuel, piece of fuel of some sort nearby, and it will actually end up eating that fuel. You'll notice it actually has some red particles. So it is generating mana to this mana spreader, along with all the uh, day blooms. Now, after a little bit, it will end up being available to accept another piece of coal. In this case, let me grab a whole bunch. And you'll notice if I toss a whole bunch on it, you think, oh, well, it's just going to eat them all. No, it only eats uh, a little bit at a time. So you're going to end up having to have it timed. Well, that's where you end up having to create some kind of automation for it. Uh, now, in this case, I'm going to show you a little simple, very simple method of doing it. Obviously, there are tons of different ways of making one, uh, but I'm just going to do this so that you guys can see a very simple entry level method. To get this automation going, we're going to need to make an open crate. In order to do that, you'll need living wood planks. To make living wood planks, you'll need living wood. Allow me to demonstrate. Take living wood that you obtained from the pure daisy turning regular logs into living wood. Put it into a crafting grid and you get four living wood planks just like you would for logs uh, to uh, regular wood planks. Take these, enough of them, to create an upside down U and you get yourself an open crate, which essentially will drop items fed into it one at a time. In this case, I've put down a wooden, uh, what do you call it, uh, wooden pressure plate, plus a little bit of redstone up to a hopper, which is uh, feeding off to the side, which is also where I'm going to put the open crate. I put the open crate here, and it will now drop items directly down onto this pressure plate. So if I feed this hopper a couple stacks of charcoal, it will one at a time drop the charcoal. And when the charcoal is not being used, it will end up putting weight on the plate and shutting it off. When it is used, it goes away and you see it does a little pulse and therefore will continuously be used. I have eight of these right now, so it's going to keep going for a little bit. And uh, it's generating way more mana than this little mana spreader can keep up with. If you notice, it is completely full right now because it is currently getting uh, daylight uh, feeding from the day blooms, and it's also hooked up to some of these endo flames. Actually, I think it's hooked up to all of the endo flames, 
which is a, a bad thing actually. So I'm going to end up putting down another one of these uh, mana spreaders here so that it can also end up getting it. Now here's the trick. If I put down a new mana spreader, let's say I put one here and I put one, excuse me, little day bloom here. And I'm going to move this one just by putting it over there. So right now, nothing's happening. Well, none of them are aimed at it. So let's take care of that. Get this here and this here. And you'll notice nothing is still happening. It's because the order that I put these down. I put the flowers down second. So if you pick the flowers up and put them back down again, that will work. Alternately, you can actually, because right now it's saying there was a mana spreader there. That was the one I was hooked up to. You can just shift right click and tell each plant where it needs to give its mana. Allow me to uh, turn the time back to day again. And so on. Now in this case, I'm going to go over here to these uh, and we're going to have four on each mana spreader, which is still probably more than they can handle, but it's what I'm going to go for for now. Over time, the day blooms will disappear as the, they will go away. So I just ended up removing the uh, mana spreader that was over there. And you can see now that the mana pool is actually getting quite a bit more mana from this method. Now you can actually feed uh, like uh, blocks of coal, uh, lava, and so on in there. But you'll want to be careful with lava, obviously, as it can uh, destroy the plants. So you're going to want to have it surrounded. Now, I am going to recommend that we make another item. Let's go take a look. All right, here we are back at the mana pool. You can see it's still doing good. I went and got a piece of glass, an iron ingot, and three gold nuggets. Toss the glass in, and you make yourself some mana glass. Iron ingot, you make yourself mana steel ingot, which you can also make these uh, into armor that can be very useful. But we're going to go into that in another episode. And three gold nuggets. Go into a crafting grid, put the glass, mana steel ingot, three gold nuggets, and you can make yourself a mana seer monocle. Now how does this work? Well, whoops, allow me to demonstrate. Put this on, you get yourself a little monocle, and it allows you to better see the area that plants cover. When I look at this, it says that it will accept charcoal in this area, which is very, very handy. So I could have charcoal way over here being dropped, and these plants will still end up picking it up, or some other fuel source. So if I accidentally drop some wood down, and uh, these are currently eating something, it might end up eating that, as it's considered a fuel source. So with this in mind, this should make things much, much easier to work with. Plus, it didn't use up that much of our mana pool in order to do so. And in fact, it used up such a negligible, negligible amount that it's uh, totally worth it, in my opinion, to get this just to help with flower placement in the future. So now we've got this automated method. You can see it's actually chunking through the charcoal quite quickly. Now, obviously, you could be mining the entire time and waste a lot of uh, coal, but there are other methods that you can do. I'm going to show you a down and dirty basic method for a fairly effective tree farm early on until we can get the Elfheim portal open. Once we get that open, things will change considerably. But for now, that's just the goal of this video. And I think I'm going to end this first part of this three-part getting started series here. First part's going to be, as you've seen, we just get started in uh, Batania up to a point where we can start making some mana. Part 2 is going to be making an automated tree farm. Part 3 is going to be getting into the Elfheim portal. So, hope to see you soon, and until next time, see ya.